that's one thing about our conquer. It has the like you can adjust the suspension on it. Like yeah, you the, can. In case camera started. Yeah. Out. I know. <laughs> well, good morning. We woke up to this amazing spot here in the Oahis in southeast Oregon. And today is day four of our trip. And it's just been unreal. I don't know if you've seen the other videos for this trip. If you haven't, go watch them. It's just been unreal. The Oahis are unlike any other place I've ever been. Unlike Colorado, unlike Idaho, unlike Utah for sure. They're just incredible. Um, so, the agenda today, we are pretty much packed up. The exception of a few things. Um, Brad and Regina are, well, we, we've got to go separate ways today. So that's sad, but they've got a uh, different route. They've got to start taking, you know, on their way home to Southern California. And we don't have anywhere to be until Expo Pacific Northwest in two weeks. So we're just hanging out and exploring. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make our way south from here through the Oahis. And the goal is to get to camp early and it's it's one where there's a hot spring there so I've, I've never i've never been in a natural hot spring before so super pumped about that but that's our goal it's, it's on the it's on the river just across the river is a hot spring and i'm pumped so we're gonna head out of here in just a little bit and just kind of take our time and explore a little bit but the goal is to get to camp early <laughs> we are out of here um, said our goodbyes to brad and regina Wish them luck on the next leg of their journey. Got a sweet tour of the uh, of the of the van too. Um, and I know that's you know when you go from Jeep and you, that's a uh, it's a cool option. It's a very cool option. And once Karen and I are living full time on the road, you know, after a year of pulling the trailer and all that stuff, we we may look into a van. It's uh pretty sweet it's, they're pretty sweet so we do have to stop at a town a little bit later we need to refill our water go ahead and get more gas um, all that good stuff so we need to we, we need to replenish supplies so we'll do that but we've got a little section of, of trail in the Oahis that we want to explore before we before we do that and then hopefully we will get to camp pretty early like early afternoon so that's the plan anyway we'll see how it goes Brad and I were just sitting, listening to the birds this morning and talking, and he was definitely feeling the same way, but this is the most relaxing, and so far the most amazing trip that Karen and I have been on. Because this is the first trip we've been on where we didn't have a set agenda. You know, where we, we're running this trail this day, and running this trail this day, and we have to get to this destination by this day, and we, you know, uh, we've got a Airbnb on this day, da, da, da. Um, which, I mean, all of our trips have been like that in the past, when we've come out to Colorado and Utah and whatnot, we've, you know, had strict dates. There was never just chilling at camp like we did yesterday. There was no, you know, this morning we woke up, it's, it's 10.30 now, and so we've just got to relax. Um, and I know not everybody has that freedom to, to do a trip and just wander. Um, no agenda other than to, to see what you can find. But if you have that opportunity, you know, if do it. I highly encourage you to do it. Or at least work one or, you know, if you've got a week-long trip that you're doing, at least work one or two days of relaxation and being able to go hike and explore you know other areas and stuff and soak in a town or, or whatever but it, this this so far is the best trip we've ever done because it's just so chill right, we are taking a right 
at this little fork and we'll see where it goes this will be the, the only trail we do for a little bit and then we're gonna get on pavement and go down to Johnson Valley and then go to camp wow dropping into this valley is gorgeous I keep using that word a lot what did you think about the van Uh, the van was way cool. It, it handled some stuff that I was skeptical of. are coming to greet us. Nope, they got scared. They ran away. What is that? Is that a cow? Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey. Hey, little feller. I can't go around them. Oh, it's good. I can't it. I feel like we just crossed over into Owyhee pasture land. We saw evidence of cows in the other places we've been, but no, no, no cows. And by evidence, I mean cow poop everywhere. There's a whole bunch of them right here. Hold on. Look at that guy with the white face. Oh, they're so cute. There's all over the road here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. You need to wipe your booty. Ma'am, ma'am, you need to wipe your booty. You're not being sanitary. Um, little guy. Little guy. Um, left or right, bro? Come on. There you go, there you go. Get on over. Good job. Good boy. Ah. Uh, the terrain here is a lot different. It's not as rugged in this southern part as it was in the northern part. So that's probably why. Still beautiful. But just different.
question for you. Brad and I were talking this morning, and as you know, full-time YouTubers, we are always nervous about adding new elements to the mix because, I mean, quite frankly, some of y'all could be hateful in the comments. Most of y'all are like super nice, but some people are like hateful. And like Brad now having the van, and it's not going to be a regular on his channel, but it's an option for them depending on the type of trip that they're on, like this one. And Brad's nervous, and I think rightfully so, that, you know, the people who normally watch his channel aren't going to be receptive to that. And they're going to be hateful in the comments. Um, and some people might even unsubscribe because he bought a van. Uh, I had the same thought. If you watched my last video from from yesterday, um, it's a lot of hiking. And so I was a little unsure about how that video was going to go over because the first half of it's it's a lot of hiking. And my friend Rob with Revere Overland, uh, he just released a video on how to overland with a baby because they have a new baby. And people want to know about it. And people were awful in the comments. Um, and people, a lot of people didn't watch the video, and I think that's fine. That doesn't apply to everybody. But there were just some hateful comments in the video. Because he's overlanding with a baby now. I mean, God forbid, he and his wife have a child. And so my, what I told Brad, and my theory is, and I hope this is true, and this is the question for you. I know there are people that watch this channel because we have Jeeps, or because I drive a Gladiator. And people watch Brad's channel because it's Jeeps or a 392 or whatever. But I hope that the majority of people, the you know, the core audience, watches any channel because, especially, you know, like like we do. I mean, we're just we're sharing our lives with you, you know. For the, that's we're just out on adventures and we're sharing it with you. Uh, but I hope you're watching because. You, you like following along with our adventures. And it doesn't matter if I'm driving a Gladiator or if I, you know, went completely insane and bought a 4Runner. Um, you know, I, I hope the vehicle that I drive doesn't matter. Um, I hope the fact that uh, on our adventures we're hiking instead of lots of wheeling or we're rock crawling instead of overlanding um, or in a few days skydiving. Uh, instead of, I don't know, it's like real overlanding, like way over the land, and you go come down to the land real fast. But anyway, I, I I hope that you're following along just because of our adventures, because personalities, um, you know. That that that's that's my hope. So let me know in the comments. Uh, and I've asked this question before, but this is just very very fresh because Brad and I are having that conversation this morning. Um, and I, I, I don't want to ever feel like, oh, I can't make that content because it's going to flop on, on YouTube. Um, you, you can count on me. I'm going to film whatever adventure we're on. I'm going to share it with you. Some may resonate, some may not. But we're going to be overlanding. We're going to be hiking. We're going to be rock crawling. We're going to be skydiving. Um, we're going to be doing all the fun adventure things. And I'm going to bring you along. So... There you go. You can get the gun out for that. That was a massive flock of pelicans. That was gorgeous. I hope that like National Geographic little level footage there, because it looked amazing on my screen. So we'll see. But that was awesome. Well, we've made it to the highway. We're gonna air back up and run into a small town nearby, resupply, especially water, because uh, both Karen and I took showers. I took two showers. Uh, yesterday so 
that showers run through water really fast. But we're gonna do that. Hopefully the towns, I know they have a gas station. Hopefully they maybe have like a small grocery store too. Um, and then we're gonna go find this epic camp with the hot springs right across the, the, the river from it. Uh, I'm, I'm pumped, should be a great spot. cool thing about the Red Arc Red Vision system is everything's monitorable from the app. So I can see I'm almost at a full tank here of water and I'll go fill the other tank. A few weeks ago from when this is being recorded, um, I put out a video on useless overlanding gear. And in that video I talked about excess water because, I mean, we're in the U.S. If you need gas, you can get water. Now, obviously, if you're you know, base camping for an extended period of time, hiking, you need to make sure you have plenty of water. But, I mean, that was a perfect example. I was just real nice. Asked the ladies inside, do y'all have a place that we can hook a hose up and refill some water tanks? And they're like, yeah, sure, go ahead. It's right on back. So, there you go. There is a swarm of locusts, some grasshopper thing, all over the road. Look at these guys. They're massive. They're eating each other. The ones that get squished then become a meal. Look at that guy. That's gross. That's the craziest thing ever. Now, I know last year Rob did, did this road as well and the same thing. So I'm guessing it's a seasonal thing, but that's just crazy. Look at them all. It's like a biblical plague. This route that we're following takes us over into Idaho again for just a little bit. We're about to pop back over into Oregon. Still incredibly beautiful here. Hearing the crunching and the popping under the tires. That's kind of gross. You're welcome.
So then, you know, I would, I would not stay there. I, I could not do it. It is so unbelievably gorgeous down in here. I just hope the campsite we want is available. I'm gonna be real bummed if it's not. There's a chance we may have to just not stay in this area because the grasshoppers are everywhere. I don't know if you can see them in the shots of the bluff lines and the river, but they were in the river, like piled up in big balls. These are gross. So I'm hoping that we're going somewhere else around the corner to the campsite I want and hoping that we don't find crickets there or grasshoppers or whatever these plague things are it's bad all right we stopped at this killer campsite i mean it is absolutely massive and beautiful and i mean it's got the view the views but it's this but it's there's a plague i mean look at this look at look at all the grasshoppers just moving everywhere. Look at them. Look at them. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the people in this region did to piss God off, but this is like biblical plague stuff. This is just—I've never seen anything like it. And there's no way Kara's gonna, you know, sleep with all the crickets and grasshoppers and stuff. Because this is—I mean, it's gross. Second and follow for the still. Hold on. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Please let this be doable. Please let this be doable. Please let this be doable. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Look at this. Sadly, this spot, it's just, uh, it's not big enough. And it also smells like mud. So, not ideal. 
Uh, I think we'll try that one just further up. But I really wanted to camp right here. How epic would that be? At this point, while Karen and I were turning around, Danielle decided she would go on to the water crossing and try to cross it. The guys on the other side of the river were telling her that it was deep, but she would be fine. Unfortunately, she quickly found out that um, she, she was not fine. She almost got stuck in the middle of the river. She started to float. She lost traction. But Danielle is a excellent driver and managed to get across. All right. Well, Danielle was able to safely cross. Um, it was at her max. Of course, Kara's pulling the trailer. It's taller than Danielle's defender, so... Danielle said she's not coming back. So, <laughs> um, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna go because I can easily go back and forth um, and evaluate it for Kara. So, that's All right, I'm not gonna lie. This uh, it does make me a little nervous. Only because Kara has the trailer. That's that's the big issue. Is the trailer. Hold up, let me record. Uh, I'm about to launch my drone. Don't you worry about it, but yes, record please. So here's the situation. Matt just crossed this creek here, really deep. Danielle admittedly said she went deeper than what she should have. Um, I'm pretty nervous about it. It's moving pretty steadily. Matt started going sideways and they went to check out, there's a pretty good climb after this. So they wanna make sure that I can make that with the trailer and I'm pulling the trailer through this river. Um, not comfortable with this. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think we need to play it safe and not risk you with the trailer. If you didn't have a trailer, it would be a no-brainer. Um, so see if you can start backing up into that spot behind you. So, didn't cross. Um, that's sketchy. Super sketchy. clearly see from this angle with me crossing back how fast the current is, how deep it is, and how much it's pushing my Gladiator downstream. That would have been a disaster with the trailer. Alright, that's uh, this is a hard call. We're, we're just going to split up and play it safe and run it back second, out again. So, uh, Danielle does have a sketchy hill climb here, very uh, technical. Didn't have any problems with Kara doing it. That's what the guys across the river were, were concerned about, but I just think that the trailer's gonna float. Um, Danielle floated as she went across. So the, the trailer's gonna float and that's gonna be an anchor for, for Kara. So I'm just not willing to risk it. It's a tough call. We're just gonna go back all the way the way to where we got gas and rendezvous back there. It's 5.30. Well, it didn't get dark here <laughs> until 10. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna make the best of it. But we're making the best call that we think we can. Um, she's crying. I've cried. Um, you know, it's 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 these situations. It's these situations where you're just like, um, it sucks, and you've got to figure out an alternate plan B, and you have to realize that's just how it is. You know, that's. That's part of it, and it's nobody's fault. Once I get to Creek and so, Road, far, we just, we'll just do this. All right, uh, got the drone in the air. Danielle, I'm gonna watch Danielle go up the, the shelf road up there. 
and make sure she makes it before we head out. I mean, we've got to go all the way back out to Jordan Valley. So, so, are you ready for her to go? Yeah, I told her so. She made it up. I can't watch. I mean, I can't read the comments on this video. <laughs> they'll be like, "What the hell was that girl doing?" Nah, y'all better be nice to her. Oh, no, she killed it. She absolutely killed it. All right. Well, needless to say, we've okay. got to book it back um, safely. God, this place is gorgeous, but it has been a place of hell. I almost lost my my big Sony camera as well luckily i didn't so i don't plan on filming much we're just gonna fly out of here i'm not gonna fly the drone i've already done that coming in here man that's so gorgeous but we're just gonna call that cursed i mean that's beautiful there's an arch or at least a hole wait so you're checking anything that you don't think All right, this is what the river looks like. See that, see that stuff right there? Those are all crickets. Forming a big grasshopper cricket ball. And they're just floating down the streams. Th I mean, that's biblical stuff right there. That's awful. I mean, God even turned the waters into grasshoppers. A perfect example of why she needs his oil. Well, we made it back to Jordan Valley, topped off with gas, and the mosquitoes were so thick there. Um, I mean, swarms like I'd never seen before. And I'm from Arkansas. Um, I mean, this place is, is literally cursed. Um, but what's concerning is that Danielle was not there. I really thought she would beat us there. She did have the longest amount of trail and unknown trail, but the shortest overall distance. So, a little concerned. We are now heading in the direction that she will be coming from, and hopefully we will meet up. We found her! Woohoo! Long time no see! Hi! Hi! Kara was a little worried they were never going to see each other again. Now we got to find camp somewhere. Oh, that sun is right in my face. All right, I got a text message from Brad and Regina telling me where their campsite is. Um, so we are taking off on BLM roads headed north out of Rome. And we know that, I mean, if we don't find another campsite between here and where they are, we're gonna go back and camp with them tonight. And it is almost eight o'clock. Um, it's almost nine o'clock. I, 
I've got my my Jeep says one time and my watch and phone say another because we're real close to the time change line and so I, I, don't, I don't know where I am I'm not sure what time it is here I know we've got about an hour before dark well this is a really cool kind of sketchy bridge This is uh, no longer a nice smooth dirt road. We are on trail, so things just got really slow. If we make it to Brad and Regina, it'll probably be about midnight now. This day. Well, we're now on just a really simple two track up here in these meadows. I don't know what you call it. It's pretty up here. Uh, I, mean, I would not be opposed to there just being a clearing for a campsite. I don't. I don't need anything epic tonight. Just, uh, just something. But much slower going than I expected us to. I'm doing 10 miles an hour. Brad and Regina are. 50-ish miles away, so I don't think we're going to make that. Unless that's the only place we can find. Well, the sunset doesn't suck. That's a plus. Well, for a place we rolled into at 11 o'clock last night, it could be a lot worse than this. It's actually not bad. We've got uh, just this nice big clearing here. I mean, room for quite a few rigs here. But the plan for today is basically to recoup from yesterday. Uh, Danielle knows of a, a private campground that is a 24-hour hot spring and so we're gonna go there so it's, uh, I, I'll take you along I'll show you um, but that's that's the plan is to go to the hot springs. do you remember the name of it crane. crane crane hot springs it's about two hours away from here because we've got so much trail to run to get out of here and then I've got some editing to do for next week's video um, so today's going to be a, a, a recoup day and then tomorrow we travel up near Portland to get ready to skydive on Saturday. So that'll be planned. That will be the next video after this one is the skydiving and then where we go after that. So um, yesterday just did not go like we thought. I mean I legit woke up yesterday morning probably excited to have one of my favorite days so far and we've had some really good days you know with just being down there on the river and we've got our paddle boards with this and the waterfall and the hot spring that's there I mean it just was going to add up to an epic 
day that ended up being one of the most horrific, challenging, just defeating days I've ever had on the trail. And having to split it from Danielle, um, Kara not being able to cross, we've all beaten ourselves up. Kara's all bummed because she feels like she's the weak link on the trip with the trailer and just not being able to, to cross that. Um, Danielle regrets making the decision to cross it because that scared the crap out of her. Um, you know, I'm beating myself up because I should have told Danielle, nope, not gonna do it, let me go first because I'm the tallest cheap, you know, I'm the tallest rig that we have. And I do that sort of stuff all the time. So, you know, you live, you learn, make different choices next time. So, but uh, we're gonna just chill around here at camp for a little bit and then make our way over to the, to the hot spring. Um, I know we want to look to see where there are some fireworks places. Are there good fireworks in Newport? Um, no, but that's where Cindy Pope with, from Northology, uh -huh. that's, that's yeah, where no. she's supposed to be. I mean, that's over on the coast. I don't know how far away it is from that spot that Will gave us to, you know, to camp on the beach, but maybe, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't say for sure nothing on this trip has gone according to plan. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the way it goes though, right? <laughs> If I see another cricket today, which I found out last night, I was looking those up. Those are Mormon crickets. Apparently, there's huge infestations, and they're like, get, people are buying goats. Like oh, yeah, buying goats to, to, to eat the crickets. Millions and millions of crickets. It's a goat conspiracy. The, the people selling goats brought all the crickets in to increase the demand for goats. No, that's not it at all. I bet. The dust out here is no joke, but the fridge in the back handles it awesome. I don't drink coffee, so. Right, the plan now is to stop in the little town of Rome. And by little town, I think there's a gas station. Uh, just to top off our tanks and make something to eat. It is already noon. We've just been super chill this morning. These trips are the best. This, this trip has been the best so far. Even with the plague yesterday, this type of trip, highly recommend. Um, but since lunch yesterday, which I only ate a little bit of uh, pastrami and some cheese. Uh, I have had dried mangoes from Sam's. These are the best. I have had a little bit of chocolate, dark, dark chocolate, sea salt caramel. I have had um, honey mustard onion pretzels. And I have had Bucky's cashews. So that has been the extent of my nutrition for about the last 20 hours. So need to get a, a, a sandwich.
I right, made it to Rome. And all that's here is this little station cafe. Got some cabins. But they have a killer looking BLT. Goose like the bee. Uh-uh. Yeah, he did. Did you share? No. There's just a little piece hanging Stop out. Stop it. No. <laughs> that was a killer bacon sandwich. BLT. But I like the tea, so this is the BLM. The bacon, lettuce, mayonnaise. That was killer. Next stop, Crane Hot Springs. Looking forward to this one. All right, here is home sweet home for tonight. We rented the, the the fifth wheel so we could have a nice place to sit and chill and me to get some work done. It's like a cool renovated RV on the inside. Look at this. Hey, it's pretty nice. It feels I mean, so good in here. not bad at all. It's real cute. It's time to do what we came here for. Hot springs time. Yeah. I'm excited. There's one called the lobster pot. It's like 105 degrees, I think they said. It's gonna cook you. That's lobster. They've got... I wonder if they put butter in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> They've got a bunch of RV sites here. They've got primitive camping here. They've got... Uh, teepees. Teepees with king size beds in them. That's kind of cool. So good. The water in here is perfect. It is so just awesome. This is a this is a cool place. I've never been in any place like this before. I love it. This was this was a real good move. I'm not that stupid. I really like this overlanding thing. Got its perks. Thanks so much for watching. We are gonna call it quits here in this amazing hot spring. This day has uh, ended much better than yesterday did. So much needed change of pace. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, if you would, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, help us reach the goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And if you uh, like the channel and want to help support us, gain access to special events, special content, all of our GPS data, um, like where the plague of Mormon crickets can be found, um, check out our, the Patreon link in our description. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, um, should, we, should we include swimsuits? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching. Next time we're skydiving. See you later. Bye.